Hello, 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 this is Attorney Mike Grab. I'm coming to you from Chicago, as usual. We're back. It's a big day. Let's do it. Turn yourself into jail right now. There we go. There we go. Good morning. Good morning, John. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. I'm a little tired after last night, but it was a really great conversation. I appreciate you and Natalie coming on. It, I thought that it was Oh, good Lord. You, you and Natalie got, got into talking about serious law. I got it was like a that. fish out of water over there. Oh, it was fun. It I was fun. It was, that, that, was, was that was a good stream. And, and after we did, well, I don't know, it was a short day for the afternoon. I will say that. But we did yeah. two long streams still. And then, uh, and then, uh, oh, well, this is what I want. Okay. And then I ha had a chance to uh, have an interview with Jessica Blanche. I couldn't turn down. So there, there you have it. Uh, it was a long day for both of us, but now it's we get fun. To, but now we get it, to sit through like what seventy pages of jury instructions. So that'll be awesome. Ah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Well. This ought to be interesting. What else did they have up this morning? I can't remember. So what do you mean? What do they have up? They have jury instructions. I mean, what, what, we're, all, what we're all tuning in for is closing arguments. My understanding is that she's going to do the first chunk of jury instructions, and then she's going to pause, let them do closing arguments, and then she'll finish jury instructions in the afternoon or evening, hopefully being done today. <laughs> Fort, Fort Brooks went down in flames. It did. It did. But it was the highlight of yesterday. It really was. Oh, Lord. All right. Well, he's got his boxes again. No jacket. He, do, he, doesn't, he doesn't know what to do with any of the documents, but he's got them. Are you implying he can read? Oh, of course, this is all. We, we deal exclusively with lawful law here. <laughs> I don't know. Occasionally, I like unlawful law. Let me see here. Come on, line crime. Where's your audio? He's He's pretending to read something. All right. Well, this is worth doing again. Th this is funny. Uh, this is what your viewers do to you. They they're like, you should you should clip this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, what I should. It's an old video I forgot about. The amendment due process rights. I make a reservation for those rights, especially but all rights at this time. Here we go. The record to reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody. He is appearing uh, today in street clothes. He has a dress shirt and a tie. Um, he's also wearing a mask. I'm just ready for jurisdiction. Yeah, I then I to be called that name for the record. As this paperwork, I accept for value and return for value. As it does not state the correct name, it states the name of my client, the straw man. I am not this name in all capital letters. I do not. And we're off. That name, nor do I know that individual. Your objection is noted. It's baseless in law. In fact. And that is simply a caption on a pleading uh, on the final name. jury instructions. That is not my name for the radio. All right. The record to reflect, Mr. Brooks, I'm talking, the record to reflect that at 3.23 p.m. yesterday, all of the verdict forms were printed off and provided to Mr. Brooks. I also uh, provided him with an excerpt from the bench book on closing arguments. Um, I left a copy on the state's table as well, and a second copy on the defense table today as well, so that uh, I thought that would be helpful information as we are um, about that time in the proceeding for the parties to uh, give their closing arguments. Of course, prior to that, the court will be reading through the final jury instructions 
um, the parties were also given uh, this is not the updated version following the jury instruction conference yesterday as well. Uh, the total number of pages for that is 107. The court will be reading from the first 73 pages oh, okay. this morning. I do anticipate having to take uh, one or two breaks before I complete all of that. I'm, my plan is to do that uh, and then take the lunch break. Uh, and then when we come back from lunch to have the parties provide their, they're not opening, they're closing arguments. And then following the closing arguments, uh, the court has the final uh, jury instructions, which go through uh, the closing instruction, uh, instructions 460, 484, and all of the verdicts. Uh, and then the instruction to the uh, jury um, 515 about their verdicts needing to be unanimous and then um, selection of a presiding juror. The very last page 107 actually is not read until the close of the case and only following um, receipt of verdicts or some other type of disposition that would result in the conclusion of the case. It's the instruction after the verdict is received. So uh, page 107 is not something that will be read uh, today. As indicated yesterday, I will be selecting the alternates by random selection. We'll use the tumbler um, and uh, select three numbers. Oh, cool. They get to use the bingo tumbler. After all of the instructions are read and the parties have an opportunity to give their closing arguments. That's how they do it in New York. Uh, Your Honor, I accept for value in return for value any uh, documents that you just alluded to. I have not seen them. Mr. Brooks, if you haven't seen them, that is by your choice. They were provided to you. I know on multiple occasions yesterday, you threw items into the garbage can. Um, the court retrieved the final jury instructions. I personally didn't, I had someone do it, had them placed on the table this morning and any other items you threw in the garbage. So is that is that the paperwork that I had to stay here for over an hour for? Oh dear God. Sir, I'm not going oh, he's to a busy man. Further, what we did during he's the got jury so much to do with the, the rest of his life. Jury instruction a conference. Bit later. It was, there was a conference. We talking about the proceedings from yesterday or after you had uh, told us we recess. <laughs> I'm referring to after you call recess for the night yesterday. That's what I'm referring to. I, I, was, I was put in the holding cell for over uh, an hour because well, they said it was some. The alliteration had something. That is be. correct, sir. You were kept there in order for my clerk who had to finalize 76 verdicts to each one not guilty one guilty and provide those to the parties. Um, <laughs> so that's why you were kept there. So those could be handed to you. My understanding is they were, I would need a bailiff to confirm for me whether he took those back to his cell or if they were put on his desk because he left them um, in the holding cell. Left them in what holding cell in here? They have to look through his paperwork to see if they're on here. Oh, this is going to be a long what day. are you referring to, Your Honor? Behind the door. I, I didn't leave anything in that holding cell. I was just trying to figure out why I was in there so long. Those are the verdicts? Yeah. All right. He has those. Thank you. Is this the paperwork that was just put on my... It was the paperwork on uh, the desk when I came in. That was on top of my folders. Mr. Brooks, I know that they were... You were given the opportunity to take them to your cell because that is what I was advised. Whether you did that or not, I don't know. Yeah, same way they are also Arizona on ice tea. Now. I accept for value in return for value any documents. Oh, please. We did discuss all of the jury instructions and the verdicts yesterday. So what was discussed when I was in the cell for over there an hour? There was no discussion, sir. The court was in recess. Madam Clerk was simply finalizing the paperwork based upon the discussion that was held on the record in open court yesterday. I was told that I had to stay there uh, per you. 
Yes, so that we could provide them to you and you have right. an opportunity mm -hmm. to take them back to yourself. But can they, you can they have been them? delivered to the jail? All right. Um, I don't believe there's any other preliminary issues there we are. need to address other than an advisement. I will have for Mr. Brooks, but let me turn to the Subject matter jurisdiction. Let's go. Preliminary to uh, this phase of the trial, which is the jury instructions, the verdicts, um, and closing arguments from the state. Oh, Your Honor, thank you. All right. Anything else from you, sir? Yes, there is. Um, yesterday, I stressed to the court numerous times about me not understanding the proceedings um, and essentially how uh, decisions were being made on my behalf without my understanding or giving consent. It would be helpful if you had a lawyer to explain that to you. The court Just made various rulings idea. yesterday. I made findings and ultimately made some determinations. I stand behind the record that was made. I'm not going to explain it further. So a lot of those decisions were made when I was not present in the courtroom. I was in the other courtroom, correct? That's true, sir. Is that correct? Um, the record will indicate when those were made and where you were. I can't I can't see the record, though. How, how am I supposed to know what the record will reflect? <laughs> I not <laughs> sir that's that's the ambitious decisions were made yesterday not revisiting them today thank you they need to be revisited and they, it also needs to be yes. talked about uh subject matter jurisdiction that has yet to we're be actually put, really put good at taking law and putting I'm it into to understand kindergarten. Your how, um, that's something we do you made a, le a, a a judicial determination on my behalf which i did not give consent to Nobody asked for your consent. As you say, I forfeited my right to testify, which I never did. I never yes, said I wanted to. I never said I didn't want to. But Nobody that decision asked. was made for me. Yes. Also, the decision, the decision for the defense to rest his case was made for me, which I did not consent to, nor did I say I was ready to rest, or nor did I say I did was re ready to rest. Did was ready to rest. All right. Here we go. I'm trying to understand how all these decisions are being made with without my consent, without me waiving any rights. I'm, I'm not understanding how, because none of my answers were unresponsive. I just didn't answer the way that your honor wanted me to answer, but I stressed yesterday if I don't understand something, how am I supposed to answer a question that I don't under, understand fundamentally? It's not. The world frightens and confuses me. And it's you not built saying, a box okay, for an way this or that right for like twenty minutes. And I'm not. I'm not trying to make an argument with you in any way. I'm just seeking to understand how these decisions are made. If I'm letting the court know and I'm putting the court on notice, hey, I don't understand this or I don't understand that. Any other things? Otherwise, I'm prepared to address each one of those. Yeah, yeah. midnight. Um, absolutely. Ask your lawyer. Was, uh, you might a mention, be a mention you. of oh, uh, if there is a conviction in this matter, there is a mention of um, sentencing, which I'm assuming there be a uh, some type of um, um, people. There be. Uh, <laughs> I know I'm, if there is a conviction on my half. Fantastic argument. Want to uh, address address the court? Um, there'll be a lot of affairs. God, that I want to copy in order, this trace, but Obviously, on my side. Um. If it pleases the if court, if there shot, is DM me, a I will pay in this you matter, to I would like the, uh, this transcript. the sentencing to, to not be so quick. Um, I'm asking if it pleases the court for the sentencing to be held off into a later time, not a day or two or a week, just so that affairs can be put in order properly and so that the people that want to come in and and speak will have the opportunity to address the court. I think if, that request, you, you forfeited that. if that pleases you, we talked about it last night. Request. I thought about that and some more overnight that it, in the event there is a conviction that 
Um, I would like to give the parties an opportunity to do that. I have no idea how many people would want to speak. My inclination would be again, and I'm, this is not set in stone. If there is a conviction um, on any of these counts, I may ask the she needs to stop rethinking things overnight because on Monday somehow I those end up being with, uh, kind of poor decisions in my opinion. plan of how many people do you think will speak on your behalf? How long do you think it will take um, so that I can look at my calendar and then uh, set aside the appropriate amount of time? I certainly don't want to rush anything. And I think that's a fair request that you're making. Thank you. All right. Um, so with all of that, then, sir, subject matter jurisdiction, I decline to address that further. I stand by the written decision um, that I've made previously. Um, as far as the rulings made yesterday regarding uh, your ability or inability to present further testimony and witnesses and to testify yourself, the court did make various rulings and findings that you had forfeited your right to do so by conduct. I'm not going to further explain the law or these prior rulings to you. I stand behind them, and I believe I made a very, very clear record. Um, you know who so could explain it? That you are asking your me to lawyer. consider any of that. Uh, that's but how I would interpret him. your statements here today. I decline to do so. <clears throat> so, Your Honor, would that be? Um, no, stop. But still not. I have no understanding to. Um, why I wasn't given the opportunity to place certain things into evidence. You could That's literally pick any random evidence. member of your chat and they evidence. would be a better lawyer Zero. than Evidence that I was able to place into evidence, nothing. I disagree with that, sir. You called, I think, nine witnesses on your behalf um, on various issues, including uh, the honking of the horn, the window tinting, you cross-examine many of the state's witnesses about police barricades and the presence of police. Ooh, so you did I'm, present. Was evidence. it awful? Speaking to the terms of everything that um, Your Honor asked me to do, you told me to uh, put everything that um, I needed to present to the course in writing. You you made that ruling. You told me that's what I needed to do. I did that. Um, I, Mr. Brooks, you may have interpreted that. I did not require you to do that as far as evidence in the case. I very expressly told you there are rules of procedure and rules of evidence that govern exhibits, testimony, witnesses. She gave you the book when you what fired your you lawyer. Is that any request Read it. that you have related to the case? If it's a motion, be put in writing. I specifically referenced the statute 80201 regarding how a motion is made and what it should contain, meaning it has a very express uh, request for relief and states the law and the facts upon which the request is being made. Yeah. Um, again, I'm not gonna revisit the prior rulings. Um, I stand behind them. And to the extent that the record does not have, uh, meaning the record before the jury and the evidence does not have certain pieces of information, evidence or testimony that you uh, wanted to present, um, you forfeited that opportunity yesterday based upon your conduct. How did I forfeit the opportunity? Again, I'm not going to revisit that. So what I, I will tell you is this. How did I forfeit this the jury is here. To be able to place into evidence. Mr. Brooks, I'm not going to debate this further. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to debate. I'm trying to understand. To respect the fact that I've made rulings. Your Honor, that's that's. You it's made not a judicial determination. That I'm, that to you. I'm not asking you to explain three years. anything. You're We're not going to interpret what interview. I'm trying to ask you and trying to tell you. You're misinterpreting me. With all due respect, Your Honor. <laughs> that cleans it um, all up. When you tell me, I'm asking you, this is what you need to do, I'm going to take it by what you're telling me that I need to do. If I needed to make anything, request wise or anything that i needed to present to the court it has to be in writing request wise or anything i like that phrase. told me to do that i did it you also brought up when i asked numerous times before before when would i have a chance to present things into evidence you told me we were not at the evidentiary phase of the trial yet so i took that as saying okay well 
I'd give her a B plus. At some point, she's I doing will well. have the opportunity to place things in the evidence that need to be put in evidence for the record. Not the way I would do it, but a good way. So I, I'm not understanding. You agree, how like B plus ish. A decision can be made for me to actually forfeit. But what we able to put what we need right now the record that needs is this. Turn yourself into jail right now. Please <laughs> allow me to put on a defense. Uh, things that need to be known, things that should be in the record, as far as filings, as far as uh, the, by the way, uh, for the record, I was a B plus student all through law. ICFs school, so that not, I was told to, by you to address certain ICFs either to you or to the clerk of courts, which I did, and received copies for all of them except until last week. It was a few of them that I didn't receive copies for that I'm still wondering why I haven't received those copies when I received the copies of all the ones before that. But in, in, in terms of that, I did what Your Honor asked me to do. And these are things that were part of my defense that needed to be placed into the record. So where my confusion comes in is not being able to place those things into the record. Things Mr. that Brooks, things that you clearly help my defense. I stand argument. by my ruling. I'm not revisiting it to the extent that you claim lack of understanding or your lack of consent. It's been made abundantly clear on this record, your position on that. I'm not revisiting it. I'm further advising you that when this jury comes out, I expect that you will honor the decisions that were made, not agree, but you will honor them and not interrupt the court or these proceedings as I instruct the jury. So how am I supposed to put these? Oh, there is no way in hell he does. Mr. Brooks, I'm well aware of the effect my ruling had, and I'm not going to debate it with you. I'm just, I just want to know how am I supposed to get these things on the record? How am I supposed to? Because the files that I gave, you actually filed and gave me the copies back. So are those in the record? Mr. Brooks? Yes. I'm I'm no longer just seeking to to understand. I'm just seeking to understand. Mr. Brooks, I cannot explain procedure. Or evidence, the filings that or I the filed. Rulings, or I'm the asking a question, Your Honor. You. I'm merely asking a question. The filings that I presented to Your Honor. Any filings with the this court. court are in the court record. That does not mean they're evidence, sir. And I've told you That's that. That's not previously. what I'm asking. I'm asking: Are the filings part of the record? The filings that were filed in timestamp that were notarized that I presented to the court. All the filings. Oh, it was notarized. The appearance bonds. The the statement of particulars, the, uh, the notice of special <laughs> appearance, the the, uh, the the court docket sheet, your oath of office, everything that I tried to present. Bill of particulars the record, is a civil procedure. How am I not to do criminal able law. to make them the part of the record? So they were filed because you you presented them to the court during the course of this case. Anything that was not offered as an exhibit and received during the evidentiary phase is not evidence in this trial. That's what I attempted to do, and you told me that I couldn't. You that told is me, better than he's got. I am bringing this jury Your Honor, out. Listen with all to respect, me. you told me that we were not at the evidence. When I said I have uh, exhibits as well, I have stuff that I want to put into the record. I even asked. I said, "Mr. Brooks, may I give an offer, an offer into evidence?" I'm these, going to stop you things. once again. I'm not going to have this discussion and debate. The evidentiary phase of this trial is closed. It we should are not now be, at though, the Your jury. Honor. I understand your lack of consent. Your objection so when would I be is able to put, for the When record. would I be able to put vital information into no, and the would record, have had which I haven't had the opportunity to that do? That opportunity has closed for you, sir. So so you're saying basically you're, prejudice, you're prejudicing my defense by me not being able to present things into evidence, offer into evidence, Filings in important paperwork and documents. Mr. Brooks, and you How forfeited not, your right to do that by your conduct yesterday, and I stand behind that decision. I asked, I'm going I asked to do before the yesterday, sir. Your Honor. I, am going I asked to do this the before yesterday. You have not honored my request to you that you cease debating me on prior. I'm not trying to debate. Court. I'm trying to. I'm trying to understand why my due process is being violated. Mr. Brooks, the record it's speaks not. for itself. No, the record does not. I am going not, to take it, it a five-minute recess. When I come back out, that's penalty penalty box the time. Jury will also be coming out. I'm advising you. There will be there will be no multiple opportunities where I uh, 
give you to conform your conduct to the rules of decorum. Well, then, then just hold you, me in contempt, then, Your Honor. You are hold hereby me in contempt because I didn't even. I'm trying to seek to understand. Start talking about subject matter jurisdiction or any of these other. It issues needs to be addressed, or Your Honor. In any way, we're not talking about subject matter jurisdiction. We're talking about why my why my due process I has will been violated. Excuse the jury, and you will be removed Honor, to the other courtroom. We're talking about the Fourteenth Amendment. Section right. I'm one. taking a five minute break. We are. Your Honor, I don't agree to a estoppel. I don't agree to a stop. I don't agree to a stop. You don't know what that word means, you freaking moron. He doesn't agree to a stop, John. I don't think you understand. That that's that ends it right there. He won. He, he doesn't know what that word means. <laughs> no, he doesn't. But <laughs> but but he but it came out of his mouth, and therefore we have to concede that he wins. Did, did he start I th- I think you... at the beginning of Black's Law Dictionary last night instead of reading the jury instructions? <laughs> you know what? You know what's good about a little five-minute break? You know what's good about a five-minute break? Uh, we get to talk, and I don't it, have to. It gives us time for a little for a little throuple. Great tea. I, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a throuple, and not only does she choose to be in a throuple. And she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. All right. So, you know, I probably shouldn't play clips like that because uh, the regulars will know know what's going on. The new people might and, not. And all the new people will be like, what an insensitive prick. This is a serious trial. <laughs> That's all Which right, it is, but we got a five-minute break. Not on me, not you. <laughs> I'm a fantastic foil. But this this one I did clip today is Turn much more important. Turn yourself into jail right now. And this the world frightens alone. and confuses me. But it's just My primitive mind can't grasp these concepts. I mean, uh, every day I'm, I'm like, I want to give unfrozen caveman a rest. He's done too much. But then yeah, Brooke starts talking, and I, I got to pull it back out. He's been working overtime. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do two seconds of education because people are asking what estoppel is. Estoppel basically just means, um, generally speaking, that you can't behave in a way that is contrary to your prior actions. And it's just a legal concept that we have. There are multiple forms of it, but you can't just turn on a dime and act suddenly differently and not have that held against you. That's it. That's the end of my education section. Is that pretty decent for a two that's second fine. explanation of let, a concept? Let, let us never speak of this again. Fair enough. <laughs> this tag it is. What did I ban? I, I banned it on my channel, but I did it on your channel last night. What did I ban? Uh, there will yes. be no syllabus. Put a stop on there. All right, fair enough. Oh, Lord. All right. You know what we could do is we could get into the rule against perpetuities. I think now's the time. Oh, I... (laughs) No no conveyance is valid unless it shall vest within the lifetime plus 27 years, uh, 20 years of some person in being at the time of the bequest. Well, that's part of it, but it gets so, so much worse. (laughs) <laughs> that's you the know. new york one that's the one that i know oh oh <laughs> lord well he's he's off with a bang so i didn't I haven't, I haven't heard him list the document so he he's filing it doesn't surprise me but he filed the entire laundry list of of dipshittery that you would get at um you know, delete laws or something. He, he basically filed the, the the trifold with her, like you know, the bill of particular, just all this offset crap. Again, we've been over this. You you discussed it. Uh, Ben's discussed it. Uh, does it occur to these people? Because he picked this up in jail. He never had a subset thought before this. Correct. That's my that's my sort of assumption. And, and by the way, and that particular seems particular to be case. where this spreads. Okay, it's so this particular this particular case. virus spreads in jail, subsidiary. Okay. Yes, it does. By does the way, it occur to any of these people that you're getting the information from somebody who's incarcerated? 
Uh, generally speaking, jail lawyers are not your best bet. <laughs> generally. I mean, I don't even... I don't even knock him on this level. It's like, I don't have a defense. They have a video of me. I'm guilty of sin. Why? I mean, really, it doesn't, you're not losing much going soft sit. But, you know, it's actually worse for some guy who's got, like, a driving while suspended and then buys in this. Because now you're now you're turning a $200 ticket into jail time. Absolutely. I mean, we, he's, he's, he's he honestly isn't losing anything. He's turning a life in jail into a life in jail, which, which, which was his starting point. But if his whole goal, and he is that sort of a narcissist, he tossed away all of the time that he had available to make a case by his own behavior. Like, I think if I were in his shoes and I was that stupid, I would want to take the stand and just say my piece. Right. Right. Like if, if, if I, had, if I had done this, oh God, that's awful. But if I had done this and knew it and they had video of it, I'm like, I'm going down. I'll, right. I'll have, I'll have my last hurrah saying whatever I, whatever I want to say. And I think that's what both of us were kind of thinking was his plan dealing with this. But, the, but you know what? That's rational. That up. And rational people don't do stuff like he did. No. So we don't end up in that position in the first place. <laughs> yeah, fair point. I would never drive through six through a right. parade of people. That, that's what you, when you try to apply like, okay, here, here's a normal functioning person. What would they do in the, in the place of this? Well, they wouldn't be there is, is, is the answer. And somebody pointed out. No, I would not. I, I, I also would not travel through a parade of people. Right. With a motor oh. vehicle. Oh, Lord. All right. You know what? This break is so long. This break is so long. It's a, it's a, it's a two thruple break. break. See, I, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's word. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. Oh, he's so good. I, you, you know what? I've, I've had, I've had a lot of attorneys on. I, I don't know, know him. I would love to have him on. He's a GAL. Um, I, I, I don't know if I don't know if he enjoys uh, being on Love Talk with Mike or not, but but there it is. <laughs> I wouldn't enjoy it. Are you kidding? I love getting called a ginger all day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, speaking of which, go over Jay Rabine. He's killing it. You, uh, that was an interesting one yesterday. We had Natalie Wisco on. By the way, I, sent, I just sent her link, but late. We we had a nice discussion of the the case law that the judge is citing um, in her case. And speak the devil. Hello, Natalie. How you doing? Hi, I'm fine. I just heard my name mentioned, and I'm like trying to get some work done today. You so are? I was like, I was like, oh, I'll join in when there's something interesting going on. And so I am like watching in the background, and I. Um, I don't know. You guys felt looked like you needed some company. So, um, you know, there's always something interesting going on because here. Wait, where, where, what do we have? That, what's what's going on with my. You guys messed up my stuff. Here. We can well, always, that was the thing is that we, we you needed a real break. Break. See, I'm going to use Ms. Fowler's where she now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple. And she shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. See, Man. see Natalie, a thruple can break out here at any moment. I, that, know. That, I need that's, to feel like I need the context about. behind that Zoom hearing. I kind of want to yeah. know what like actually is happening. Because, I mean, it's, he's making it sound real sexy. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> oh. Now you realize mine is not the most generous. Your views that that would be looked at is this <laughs> Not addressing it, the jury's coming out. So this is that a, a tacit agreement that you don't have? To oh, it's a tacit. So oh, yeah, tacit. Yeah. The word right. Yeah. Your your comments nice about job, Mr. Brooks. Yeah. actually yes, also inspired me to, to jump on behind because I saw a really fun recently about um, office. 
the rule against perpetuities. And I wish I like had a better story than that. But take that as a test it again. you know, there are some fun lawyer memes oh, about rule right, perpetuities well, out there. The hey, we're not allowed to talk about educational topics on Mike's stream. That's oh, that's what I good just lord, the jury's. He learned that we need to go yourself into jail right now. Remove to the courtroom. That's what I'm doing right now. You're forfeiting your right to be present in this courtroom unless you can promise me right now you'll respect you prior rulings of this court and not interrupt this next phase of the trial, which is the court reading the jury instructions without interruption from you. Can you do that? Have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? Mr. Brooks, I very. I like the plain clothes you. guy in the back, right? Have I acted in dishonor? You or is that press? He's looking at these press. Order from <laughs> this court. Have I acted in dishonor? You have disrupted these proceedings. I have not disrupted these proceedings. <laughs> Sir, can you, you pledge to me that when this jury comes back out, <laughs> that you will remain silent Whoa. and not reference things like subject matter jurisdiction, the court's oath of office, tacit agreements, or anything? Can you pledge that you will respect these proceedings and this jury by not interrupting? Yeah, but you have to beat the you have to beat Brooks and death with the briefcase. I don't think that would go well. Why should I? Why should I have to make a pledge, Your Honor? Have I acted in dishonor? Because under Illinois versus Allen, I believe you've already forfeited your right to be here. But you can reclaim that as soon as you are willing to conduct yourself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in these proceedings, which at this point in the proceedings, sir, all I am doing is reading through the final jury instructions. I do not want that process interrupted by statements by you that are frankly misstatements of the law. If they're misstatements of the law, Your Honor, how come they haven't been proven for the record? And I'm asking, have All I right, acted in dishonor? He refuses to answer the questions. Have I, acted in dishonor, I have given Your him Honor? an ample opportunity to do so. He has forfeited his right to be present for the reading of the jury instructions, and he has been moved to the neighboring right. courtroom. We will be in recess I until better takes place. Your Honor, have, Thank I, you. have I acted in dishonor? <laughs> All right, so we're, we're, are we going to the penalty box? Is that the deal? I guess. I don't know. I think this is just like a really good example of sometimes you should like not answer questions with other questions. Yeah. Like if you're being asked a question by a judge, answer the question. <laughs> and speaking of questions, this one was he out on bond. It is my understanding he was out on bond. He had just tried to run over his girlfriend. Not that day, but another day. When this happened. I thought he was hit with a bail jumping in the other jurisdiction. Yeah. yeah, he's got multiple open cases. I'm looking right now. Um, he has an open Milwaukee case that was filed on 11-05-2021. And then this one was filed 11-23-2021. So oh, he, made it, he made it almost three weeks. Yeah. And then that additional, he's, he's since then picked up another Milwaukee County case that was filed like a week after that for intimidate victim um, in Milwaukee County. So he's got three open cases right now. This is the I'm, only Waukesha one though. I'm getting the overwhelming sense that you know what you're talking about. I'm As looking a at a website. Wisconsin criminal defense attorney uh, <laughs> look, I know looking exactly up, uh, where to looking look up his thing. background on your computer. That's well, I mean, it's CCAP. Uh, that's that's the thing in Wisconsin. Is we actually have a very um, uh, comprehensive circuit court access system. You can't necessarily mm -hmm. see all of documents that are filed, but um, Wisconsin circuit court access. If you just like Google Wisconsin CCAP, so C C A P, um, it's like a search engine that you can search anything on there. I mean, you can look at people's divorces. I might have a speeding ticket on there. Um, I mean, anything that happens in circuit court in Wisconsin is going to be on that website. Yeah, we have something we have something similar in New York. Um, it's NYSEF, New York. Uh, I forget what the exactly is, but it's the e-filing system. And they've mm -hmm. gotten pretty good at that, too. Uh, Florida depends on your jurisdiction. Some of it's better than others, depending on what district you're in. Yeah, that is something I know, like Illinois, I believe, has its own specific district 
or county type search engine stuff, but it's just nice because it's a comprehensive thing. And that's, they also have um, Court of Appeals stuff available, which is what I had sent you yesterday where I was able yes. to get those briefs is all in at least more recent Court of Appeals cases, you can publicly search opinions and briefs, um, which is very handy. Oh, that's fantastic. I, I was looking at that and that system is actually really fantastic. Yeah, that's one thing that we do have right, is CCAP's great. <laughs> I mean, New York put a ton of money over the last maybe 10 years or so into the Unified Court System database, and it is hugely helpful. Um, Florida, not quite yet there, but I think there are efforts by some of the circuits to do that. Well, and... I don't I don't know if you guys saw the thing about Pacer earlier in the year, but like Pacer is is, is similar with federal for everyone who's listening. As you know, you can for money access basically anything that's not sealed in any federal case. Um, and there we're looking at um, waiving some of the money request requirements for that, which I think is huge because. Um, yeah. I think it's fantastic because yeah. uh, there's actually, there's a private organization um, and I've used them in the past and I don't know necessarily how kosher it is, but they basically, they'll pay for it and they'll just publish it mm -hmm. and you can access it that way. And depending upon sort of how high profile, they don't do it with everything, obviously, because it would cost a fortune, but sometimes you can find free versions and I've sent that out to people before. And I think they're also part of their deal is that if you donate to them, one, they'll download the stuff and pay the five cents a page or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, well, and uh, on top of that, they're lobbying to try and get Pacer to be free. The record yeah. reflect that Mr. Well, Lewis I was going to say, actually, like Reddit has some really, <laughs> it has in certain places really good archive of transcripts from trials that aren't otherwise available. Visual, people will like um, one person will purchase one transcript and that's you know, 200 pages long, somebody else will post another one. So you can find like actual like real transcripts on Reddit to confirm with the court that's over there as well. I would note Mr. Brooks has the headphones on. Um, and we're back. This court certainly doesn't take pleasure in removing Mr. Brooks from this courtroom once again. Yeah, we, we are do. at an important stage of this proceeding where the court Okay. Needs to instruct She's going to be talking and I got stuff to do. I'm going to dip out, but I'll come back. That will guide right. them in Good their deliberations. Thank you again for last night. It was great. Yeah, I'll be I back. Put on the record previously, the total pages um, comes to 107. I will be reading this morning through page 73 prior to the parties given the opportunity to make closing arguments and then reading from pages 74 to 106. Um, following that, it is very important that the court do this. Not really. Interruption. Uh, yesterday, this court held a jury instruction conference uh, where both parties had a full and fair opportunity to raise objections regarding any of the proposed jury instructions, to make requests regarding inclusion of any jury instructions that the court did not include. Um, as well as review all of the verdict forms. There's absolutely no reason for there to be so I guess an I didn't interruption get or an objection to this process at this time. The court spent the better part of 25 minutes this morning um, with Mr. Brooks. Oh my God, it's only 10 13. Issues and prior rulings that. that this court has spent uh, an abundant amount of time on, including subject matter jurisdiction. He continues to claim he did not consent. That's been noted for the record. He continues to claim that he has uh, a limited or no understanding of prior rulings and decisions of this court. Um, I repeatedly advised him I would not be revisiting these issues, that I wanted to go forward with the jury instructions, and repeatedly warned him that any interruption once the jury came out would result in his removal from the courtroom. Again, I take no pleasure in doing that. I prefer that he be here, but frankly, the decision I made here today with the speed at which I made the decision here today is not only to preserve the dignity of these proceedings, 
but to do so in a way that avoided the court admonishing Mr. Brooks in front of the jury. Mm -hmm. This, of course, comes on the history in this case with the repeated removals that this court has had to undertake with Mr. Brooks, given his conduct and his behavior in this case. I am currently being advised that he would like to come back. That, of course, is always uh, something that I will give him. As soon as I make my full findings, I will pause and he will be brought back into this courtroom um, so that he can be in attendance when the jury is brought out. Um, of course, my decision that I made this morning to remove him is based on the authority uh, from Illinois versus Allen. Um, I'd also note that State versus Anthony talks about the Allen decision along with State versus Vaughn. Spend money on Mike and not cigarettes. It's probably um, a better decision. Clearly, even though Mr. Brooks was using a mild-mannered tone of voice, he directly disobeyed the court order that he not interrupt once the jury was brought out. He did that immediately upon the first juror walking in. I believe only a few of the jurors even walked in. He was continuing to talk. I immediately removed them from the courtroom to minimize the impact of his disruption. It was clearly disruptive, uh, but again, he is asking to come back and I will honor that request i will further advise him though that should she's he letting him back interrupt during the jury instruction um phase of this trial by I mean, either objecting we can we can only do so many throuples uh, you, you know no in one morning bearing on the advisement to the jury by this court of all of the jury instructions i will uh consider admonishing him again. in the presence of the jury or simply removing the jury so that then I can admonish him and then making the appropriate record. All right, with that, since he's asking to come back, we will take a pause, we'll recess, we'll come back in when he's- Oh my God. Thank you, everyone. No, no more pauses. I can only vamp for so long. Um. You didn't say the cat jumped on his wiener, did you? <laughs> I love that one, too. Great tea. I, I'm going to use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple. And not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. I, I, I think I'm in the wrong world, Mike. But this I one was really yeah, um, Without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved that people were uh, giving to me that uh, ended up being glue. Like I smoked some glue and stuff. I thought I was smoking crack. And I mean, it's better than smoking Parmesan cheese like Hunter Biden. <laughs> uh, oh, God. Oh, good Lord. She's letting him back. This is not a good idea. I mean, we spent all morning with the with the five minute breaks going back and forth. It's okay. It's okay. It's kind of fun. We have our sovereign citizen jurisdictional argument. I didn't know he did the bill of particulars and all that routine. It doesn't surprise me, but he he did he he dropped the whole packet on her. But oh, then I'm, then he thinks she's supposed to admit that into evidence or something. Just because you file something doesn't mean it's admitted into evidence at trial. <laughs> No, of course not. You have to introduce it. And he did it. Lay a foundation. You know. Oh, God, God None forbid. of it's relevant. None of it's, not, it's all bullshit. He doesn't understand the concept of laying a foundation. That's, that's way beyond him. I mean, I think he just started being able to draw within the lines on a freaking coloring book. Well, he did Maybe. pronounce tacit correctly for the first time uh, that I've seen in this trial. That is true. So, uh, you know, but good God on him. He's actually learning, and then maybe he might actually get close to a real argument. Oh, Lord. I can't believe she's letting him back in. Anybody right. can well, learn. The question the, is whether the, they actually will. They got to be coming back, but, you know... Uh, this 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 one 
This one right here might be my yeah. Um, without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved that people were uh, giving to me that uh, ended up being glue. Like I smoked some glue and stuff. I thought I was smoking crack and. But but you know, I'm not out. I'm I'm, I'm developing quite a library. This one's nice too. That's a good one. The wheels of justice are going to roll you right into the Wayne County Jail. <laughs> Amen. So oh, it's so good. It really is. No, I just I, I literally at, at this stage of the game, it's been almost an hour, and we haven't even gotten to the first page of jury instructions. Yeah, but she's she sees what they've got going on. She she's going. She's already decided that she's playing this out. That she's on schedule for her. Yeah. Let's read these damn instructions. I'll t it'll take what it takes. We'll start opening, and that, that's actually fair from a from a trial judge perspective. Give them an opportunity to know when it's the opening starting, so they can be prepared for it. I mean, if you figure she has to get through seventy pages, so you figure maybe three hours, give or take. So maybe they just start the closing after lunch. Are you going to act in this? Mr. Brooks. Are you going to act I've in this? I've already honor? addressed your request. It hasn't been proven for the record, Your Honor. Oh, my God. The jury is on its way. They're not out yet, though. But man. they're on the way. You held me in contempt. I'm not you held addressing me in contempt these matters, before. sir. Have I, have I acted in dishonor, Your Honor? You held me in contempt without me being in dishonor. Nobody I, held you I, in I, contempt, I you idiot. Before. You don't know what have that I means. In dishonor? Have I rose my voice or argued with your honor? Have I rose my voice? Oh God! I've never should have Please been. Please be respectful of their time. <laughs> I have. I have been. They weren't even the out before. Of the proceedings. They weren't even out before. I think the jurors should send a question, just ask you if they can show up an hour home. late every morning. Have I, am I acting in dishonor? Am I acting in dishonor? Yes. So that's a tacit agreement that you don't. Jury, it's a tacit he agreement. He said it right again. Don't have to answer questions as a public servant. Right? All right, the jury. Okay, no, no jury's out. Say a word. Oh, and go ahead and put yourself on mute now. To address Mr. this before they right came outside up. the store. I am not going to do this with you this morning. You either abide by doing, these rules am I and stay in quiet, or you will be in, in the other courtroom. courtroom. Am I acting in dishonor? Yes, you are acting How? in dishonor. How? You are disobeying the direct order of this court to respect the decorum and the dignity of these proceedings you are merely attempting to delay i don't care what you think that's not accurate mr brooks i am having this jury out and, and if you and say you're making, one word when that door opens you're making a tacit agreement then you will forfeit your right to be present so you're acting in dishonor then your honor all right the jury may come in you know what you're there is a sanction find the hell out of him and, and take away every dime that he has in order to Make sure You're that for the rest of his life, he doesn't even have a commissary account. The All right, the door is open and he's talking. Turn yourself into jail right now. Mr. Brooks is going to be removed. We're in recess until that. How, I, how am I acting in dishonor? Oh, I can't. I can't. <laughs> Oh my God! There are only so many, so many clips that we can play. I I don't have anything to talk about at this point, other than I actually think she should just fine him money, and just take away everything that he owns before he goes to jail, and then he can't buy his tuna and ramen. I I don't know what else to do at this at this stage of the game. Uh, you can you can always have a. You can always have another Rick, thruple. See, think I'm about going it. to use Miss Fowler's words. She now is in a thruple. <laughs> and not only does she choose to be in a thruple, and she's shacked up in the bed with the thruple. Now, if anybody thinks this is okay, I am in the wrong world. That's, that's all we can do. <laughs> I mean, it, people are asking about the dishonor thing. It, it's just a dumb sob sit term. It's absolutely, yeah, I might be doing that. It's absolutely ridiculous. Being in dishonor doesn't have any legal meaning. It is absolutely nonsense. 
and yeah i just oh god it's like a, it's like a lot of subset terms it's it's just their made up thing that that they think sounds it's like lawful law yeah exactly it, it, that's exactly it it's just one of those subset terms it doesn't have any legal force or effect it's not relevant it's, it's like it's in, not statutory in, in, language i mean the, you could say somebody there's probably so it, it, it's probably used in law somewhere, but not in the context that they're implying it. I mean, to be in dishonor, if you really go back to like the history of law and we're going to, I'm going to spare everyone the education. It basically goes back to a medieval concept of law that is not relevant anymore at all. So to be in dishonor was basically, I'm do two seconds. Basically, no, I'm not. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised she cut off his defense yesterday. There is no other option. No, there he was would not else. participate. If you don't proceed after that, then that means that that the defendant wins by not participating. If you if that's the the deal, we have utter chaos immediately. The the courts do not have that luxury. There has be to be a default option if you don't play. It would be literally impossible to prosecute anyone. Because who would ever volunteer to participate in their own defense then if they knew that that was a default win for them? Uh, okay. That'd be like if you, if, if you, you know, in the rules to Monopoly, they say, okay, you play Monopoly the way we all think you play Monopoly. But at any time, if you just stand up, curse, and flip the board, you win. Well, guess what? That that's the way every game of Monopoly would end. <laughs> Ends forward. That, it's that simple. Well, it's like I, I used last week the example of it's like playing chess with a pigeon. All they do is mm -hmm. knock over the pieces, shit on the board, and fly home to tell all their friends that they won. Mm -hmm. We can't operate under that system. <laughs> oh, his defense is something else. Uh, his defense is something else. It truly is. Where? Where's my guy? Yeah. Um, without getting into further detail, there were drugs involved that people were uh, giving to me that uh, ended up being glue. Like I smoked some glue and stuff. I thought I was smoking crack. And that's that is so good. That I did, I did that clip. That that guy's giving a factual basis because he's making a plea on, on something. In in his factual basis. He you, everyone, basically seated. confesses to ten worse crimes than than the than the, the one he's playing to. For <laughs> the record, to reflect that Mr. Brooks is now in the other courtroom. I think I saw that one. Muted, that was so that a that while ago. Add to the record, um, I have confirmed he oh, can hear good and stuff. see as well. I would know he does have the headphones on uh, while in that <laughs> courtroom. He just lifted them up as well, or at least part of them. Um, this court has previously relied upon uh, the U.S. Supreme Court case of Illinois versus Allen. Uh, Hi, Mr. Brooks. We see you. The United States Supreme Court indicated it is essential to the proper administration of the criminal ju of criminal justice that dignity, order, and decorum be the hallmarks of all court proceedings in our country. The flagrant disregard in the courtroom of elementary standards of proper conduct should not and cannot be tolerated. We believe trial judges confronted with disruptive, contemptuous, stubbornly defiant defendants must be given sufficient discretion to meet the circumstances of each case. No one formula for maintaining the appropriate courtroom atmosphere will be best in all situations. We think there are at least, at least three constitutionally permissible ways for a trial judge to handle such a defendant, including one, bind and gag him, thereby keeping him present, two, cite him for contempt, or do that one. I like that idea. Take him out of the courtroom until he promises to conduct himself properly. I understand Mr. Brooks is waving to the court. I'll address that momentarily. Uh, but the bottom line is there is a history of repeated disruptive behavior by Mr. Brooks. I warned him. After Let's go with Biden and gag. I like that idea. What he wanted to do was address subject matter jurisdiction. Um, that is, from my perspective, um, simply a tactic on his part to delay yes, these proceedings, disrupt Alan. these proceedings, 
Um, I've written a written, I've issued a written decision. He has yet to appeal that written decision. He has that right to file an interlocutory appeal. I would also note at no time during this case has jurisdiction ever been challenged uh, when he was represented by an attorney. Um, so I warned Hi, him, Mr. Brooks. Um, given the importance of the <laughs> no. and the need for the court to advise this jury without interruption, he was removed once again. I will not bring him back into this courtroom unless he is willing and pledges. He's to not. Perform his We've conduct. tried this many, he many times. To not interrupt by making any statements when this jury is present and during the court reading all of the jury instructions. I will unmute him so that he can indicate what he would like to say to the court. No, no, don't do sir. that. Go ahead. <laughs> can I, can y'all hear me? We can. First of all, at 925, I would uh, like the record to reflect that the prosecution was making a uh, disparity of remarks and uh, disparative in pursuant to what just happened. I don't appreciate it. And I think that, <laughs> that is very disrespectful. I don't think they care. For the record. <laughs> and again, I'm trying to figure out how did I act in dishonor to be removed from the courtroom? How have I acted in dishonor? This is a whole nother. Oh, sweet Jesus. What? <laughs> how have I acted in dishonor? All right, I'm going to mute Mr. Brooks. I'm not going to answer that question. I've made my ruling as far as anything that was done by the prosecution. I was not in the courtroom. Um, the jury was not toughen up, Buttercup. Whatever happened, if anything at all, it's going to get a lot worse from here. The presence of the jury. Um, if there is anything, you killed was, six on the people. Right now, I'll give you that opportunity. I don't care Otherwise, what the prosecution says um, about you. I am going to bring the jury out, Mr. Brooks. Um, if you want to come back into this courtroom, you need to write your request down on a piece of paper. And when I you guarantee that you, I have stronger court, opinions than the prosecution does. Right Without now. that, um, I will not. Uh, bring you back into this courtroom. And I guarantee you, your cellmate probably has stronger opinions than a um, prosecution. Anything the state right wants now. to put on the record. I have a question, Your Honor. I don't have ben. anything directly in response to hey, the last statement. Let's see, you, brother. It's good to Yesterday be here. Yesterday afternoon, when we had the four screen up, there was a wider view of the courtroom so that the jury box could be seen. Is that possible to do? Again? Yes, it is. We can take the witness stand camera and pull it out so that he has. Yeah, I know. One of them was an eight year old. I can't angle it, but I can. He's going to have a rough um, time. Do that. And he and for the record, when you do that, then he can see the jury box. So I would ask that that be done before. Right. My, uh, please do that, Madam Clerk. So we haven't one read. We haven't read one jury instruction yet, have we? Nope. Nope. OK. <laughs> It's only been, it's only what, been an, hour? an hour. Okay. <laughs> well, the, it's not on Zoom, and so the court TV would be able to fix the camera on me and not on the screen, uh, so that mostly, they can capture any of the jurors, and they're directed to honor that and do that. Mostly, we've just been having throubles. Obviously, with our still. Oh, sounds exciting. Um, <laughs> if there are any images captured of Mr. Brooks? Um, sounds and you can see exciting. The cameras being zoomed out. Um, you would need to avoid capturing. Uh, members of the jury. Thank you, Your Honor. And the record should reflect you have zoomed out the camera, and it looks right. like about 90% of the jury box can now be seen in the view if Mr. Brooks chooses to right. do that. Mr. Brooks, I'll unmute. What is it you would like the court to address? No, no, don't. Subject matter jurisdiction. Come on. <laughs> how can I? How can I? You, you rule that I don't have the, the right to be present in the the courtroom. Right. I've Illinois v. Allen. Obviously, I've made my findings under Illinois versus Allen. Oh, we um, know. Continues to interrupt, even if it is by asking questions. <laughs> um, I've made my ruling. The record stands. It speaks for itself. Um, oh, God. And I intend. So there's to that race ipsilocator again. Brought out. I need one moment um, before I do that. Uh, and so I'm going to just take about a two minute recess. No, no, no more recesses. Oh, it's. I think the judge started smoking. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I can't the wheels of justice are going to roll you right into the Wayne County Jail. Well, you heard it. You heard it right there from Judge Judge Bryant. <laughs> wow, he's doing full soft sit, Ben. Is he? I heard something about he was. Was he in dishonor? What was he saying? <laughs> Caught a little bit of that before I came on. Yeah, oh he's God. he's upset that his bill of particulars was not admitted into evidence, despite the fact that he didn't, you know, lay any foundation or or move it into evidence. <laughs> and I heard he 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 pronounced tacit right. That's that's a yes, thing now. yes. That's I, the big development for the day. He he pronounced a word correctly. <laughs> that's kind of sad. Yeah, it was fun. The yeah, yeah, agreements fun that they had. <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh we're going to get here. So th it's been all breaks like this. Wow. But you know what? It doesn't really matter because the chat's cracking me up. Yeah, chat's oh, cracking me up. Saying a bunch of goofy, is. goofy stuff about Brooks thinking outside the box and such, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, about the box fort. <laughs> well, she let him back in, right? Doesn't take much to entertain me. He let keeps him letting out. him back in. It's driving me insane. Well, you know, it's got to be – well, she's got to. I, I mean, I think she wants to be able to say on appeal, I gave him every chance. Every time he said he would do it, I took him at his word. But, yeah, she needs to just stop. Hi, Tammy. Yeah, it, it's – What is going on here? What is that music? That? that was What's mad, that? I think. Okay. I, I, now I'm just going to get scorched for not having YouTube Premium, which is apparently a thing I, I need to have. Oh, forget that. You guys don't. Uh, you guys don't understand. The world frightens and confuses me. <laughs> I'm just My a... primitive mind can't grasp these concepts. Yeah. There you go. I'm just a small I'm just a small town attorney trying to make it happen over here, you know? It's um, tough. It's tough out there for a small I don't, town. I don't understand these deep concepts of YouTube <laughs> premium and whatnot. <laughs> Here's my dog. She wants me to you can say oh. hi to Ruby while we have a break. Hi Ruby. She's going to the groomer tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. That's that's the nicest thing I've seen all morning. <laughs> I, I she just, won't bring I me back the tennis ball. I can't believe. Yeah, well, my old dog wouldn't either. He would always just take it and run. <laughs> Fetch was kind of a difficult concept for him. Oh, thank you, Mickey. Hey, ball. They might. Uh, again, it doesn't have presidential value, uh, except perhaps in the state of Wisconsin, if it goes on appeal and that that um, tactic is affirmed, which I think it would be. Yeah. But I mean, certainly as kind of a. Yeah, what is it? Persuasive authority. I would see other states using it. Yeah, I mean, people would look at it. I mean, people want, you know, judges and everything would not know about your average trial level case in another state or, or another county for that matter. But this has the, enough profile that people will, will notice. Yeah. Tim Blandino would. So the, there's, there's always the exception that proves the rule. That's actually a good question. Um, one of them is... Is the jury going to have a video feed of his courtroom? And if he keeps waving his arms, do they do something about that? Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I don't think it helps him. You know, you have every right in the world to prejudice yourself. Oh, Kalina, she's a schnauzer mix. She's a mix between a standard and a miniature schnauzer. No. Oh. But I don't, she doesn't have the schnauzer cut, really. I'm taking another groomer tomorrow. Because she <laughs> can't stand the clippers by her face. Like, she freaks out. So, don't really give her the schnauzer cut. <laughs> she, she hates it. She The buzzing of the clippers. 
It makes you crazy. Uh, horizontal story decisis. Is that even a concept <laughs> in American law? Does Ruby know about <laughs> subject matter jurisdiction? <laughs> She might know more than some someone. <laughs> I... <laughs> oh, oh boy. come on now, people! All all this, and, the, and then we're gonna be reading jury instructions. But I th I do think there we'll have a new box for it. You know, all the way back, and I wasn't I wasn't doing it then. But you know, he he did take his shirt off in court. He did. Well, yeah. yeah, this morning. You, you never know what fun we, we had. The, we had the big go round again before I was really doing it. Where where, a few weeks where, ago. where he he says uh, who's who is you? <laughs> well, this is why if you miss the live stream, you have to go back and watch the recording. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, man, I I I almost cut off, but it was there was good stuff. Yeah. So so Nigel, this is your. Two seconds education before Mike cuts me off. In American law, state law does not cross borders. It's persuasive. It's certainly not controlling. And so there's no real concept of like horizontal stare decisis between states. They're each separate jurisdictions with their own laws. Yeah, it's not binding. Um, I'm learning. Sorry, I try. I try to avoid <laughs> it, but every now and again, and people ask me a question. Yeah, but generally like, speaking. And states that are closer to you seem to be more persuasive. Like we're basically yeah. East California here in Nevada, whatever they say is. Sure. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, New York, yeah. Connecticut, and Pennsylvania very closely track with each other. Or if the, a state's got something going on, for instance, if a state gets into gaming, they might look at Nevada and say, you know, because they've right. been doing it a lot longer and they'd be like, okay, well, we're all going to kind of follow what they're doing. Yeah. But there's there's no actual authoritative link between state laws. Does that have anything to do with subject matter jurisdiction? Perhaps. <laughs> Just asking. Asking for a friend. I'm sorry, I taught people twice today. I and it's only 1040. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. Oh. Um Black's Law Dictionary. Read that thing cover to cover. You'll, you'll be fine. There's actually a good one that I uh, so. recommended when I first got into law school. It's called Getting to Maybe. And it's kind of how to think like a lawyer in a sort of really sort of basic way. I, that was a good one. Black's Law. So does he have a Black's Law Dictionary? Or was that just, was that just you making... <laughs> did, did they I, give I, Brooks a... I'm curious. I mean, he he did he did say estoppel uh, and tacit today. He still hasn't gotten raised up to loquitur though. I'm I'm waiting for that. That's the name of your yacht, by the way, isn't it, Mike? Raised up to <laughs> yes. loquitur. The thing speaks for itself. <laughs> Res ipsa. Oh yeah, I love yeah. to hang out on that. I'm always a fan <laughs> of quibus dicti, which thing having been said. Quibus dicti. All right. Yeah. Which basically is just like having said that, and you just move on to the rest of your argument. If you want to get super Latin-y in your writing, some judges actually like that. Very few these days, but some of the older ones. Oh, Lord, come on, judge. You said it was going to be two minutes. How many oh, smokes the Blandino do you need? shuffle. I'm waiting for my son to be ready to take him to school. And then, yes, we have Blandino today. Got his revo. His What's revocation. Blandino got going on today? He's got his revocation hearing today. Oh, interesting. So we'll see what the judge says. When, when is that revocation hearing? It's today. Unless it gets I'll, I'll be I'll be on this, and that that's too bad because I, I actually want to see it. But I might I might do a video later on it afterwards. I don't know if I don't know if they're going to do it live or not. If our Nevada judges, uh, I'm pretty sure I think Alex it. will be on it. At yeah. our Nevada judges, shout out to our Nevada judges. 
Also, shout out to Jessica Blanche for coming on with me yesterday. That was a lot of fun. I mean, you know. Shout out to to, to Ben's uh, non-existent YouTube channel. Yes. <laughs> like and subscribe. You got Twitter or something? Can I send them somewhere? Where, where can I send them, to, to Ben? Oh, you know. So you can at least uh, – so you can at least uh, – uh, you know, chat with them until, until you open a, a, I have, a channel. I do have my, uh, well, my site, my Abogado Benito. That's on Twitter, at Abogado Benito for my Spanish language uh, clients and marketing. But, Look at that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Abogado Benito, I am impressed. Yes. At Abogado Benito on Twitter. It's just being impressed on that. I did not know. That? Now you know. I did not know. Well, there you go. Go check. Oh, my. Puppy, please. Where'd she go? Ruby. Ruby. More Ruby. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where she went. Oh, here she comes. Uh, people ask this, these, all these questions, all these variations. She I keeps saying Illinois v. Allen. <laughs> and that's the question. What's changed from Illinois v. Allen? You can you can do certain things go. that wave the rights, yeah, but yeah. what what does that, what does that mean? The, the answer is you do it, and then later an appellate court reviews it and sees if they, if they agree. I like the idea of binding and gagging him in the courtroom. Oh, I did hear that. That was an option. That is a legal option according to the Supreme Court. Ah, uh, she's too patient. She wouldn't do that. I would like to see it. You know, have you seen it with the the guys that they come in with like the spit hood and the mm -hmm. you guys don't do criminals, so yeah, you know, they got them with the, the like the mittens on and the spit hoods. Those are all. Can we bring? Uh, you know what? <laughs> Fine, I'll build a box for it. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a box for it for John. Great guns. <laughs> um, no, I I want to see him brought in with the uh, the Hannibal Lecter. Pull, yeah. Uh, kind of get up. <laughs> Oh, he he might be involved in a throuple when he gets there. <laughs> oh yeah, he'll be someone's favorite. Yeah, if he mouths off to the prison guards like he did to this judge, it's not going to be a good time for him. Or, frankly, the other inmates. Um, you didn't say the cat jumped on his wiener, did you? <laughs> oh, good Lord. <laughs> I try every now and again. Mike doesn't like it, but I try to sneak it in. Oh, oh, this trial would last at least a decade with with Judge Maribel running the show. <laughs> at least he'd get into a philosophical. Well, wait, wait, wait. What, what's all in your bill of particulars? <laughs> let's let's discuss that, shall we? And by the way, a bill of particulars is a legitimate civil procedure. Sure. It just has nothing to do with you running over six people. Right. Well, they they think that you can you can demand all these things, and if they and if they don't and people don't respond, respond, you can effectively default them in your fantasy law world. It's not it's just not how it works. Bill particulars makes makes sense under in the right context, but not that. Right, but that that in the in the criminal context, that's what the, is the information. That's that's what that basically is kind of the equivalent of. Uh, th this is I, I get this every day, but this it's fun today. Just coming out, what has happened? Uh, nothing. And no. a bunch of throuples. <laughs> That's fair assessment. <laughs> I've only had to slam my head against the wall six times in an hour. Uh, All right. Okay. I, I guess go two I'm minutes. Take my son to school here. I, 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 I wish. I wish the camera. Right. I mean, just... signing off. I gotta go. Take my son to All school. All right. Thanks, Ben. Be back later, Thanks for then. coming by. Bye. Oh, Lord, this is the longest two minutes. This is like the last two minutes of a football game.
My guess is he's he you know they don't have the camera on, but my guess is he is just breaking out. I could be wrong. Yeah, that could be. My guess I'd is love him if they put her on camera if he started throwing shit in that courtroom. Right. Yeah, yeah. he might be in a tussle with bailiffs and and they're, they're like, ah, you know, that's my guess. I think he realizes that this is his last day and he is freaking out inside. Although for him, I mean, he's been in jail a year. That that's his new normal. It's never going to change. Although he's going to go to prison instead of jail. I don't know. They're, 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 I always get comments like, oh, jail's worse than prison or prison's worse than jail. I mean, I don't know. I haven't experienced it. But whatever it is, he doesn't have a choice. Yeah, I've never experienced it. I was always, I was always under the impression, or at least what a... Uh, I had some professors that would deal with folks in prison. And uh, their whole thing was, if you're going to commit a crime, make sure it's a federal crime. Yeah, much less likely to have issues because federal prison tends to be better than state prisons. I don't know for whatever that's worth. That's what they were kind of jokingly advising. Yeah, he'll 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 mention jury nullification. Try that. that I, I I have no doubt about it. They, they better be right, we are prepared back on for the it. Record appearances are as they were before at 945. Mr. Brooks sent a note that says under Illinois v. Allen, I request for the second to be present at my trial. I never consented to not being present, nor did I act in dishonor because he has not made a pledge to conform his conduct as is required under Illinois versus Allen. <laughs> this um, isn't the 13th is century, you moron. Present, and we will continue with him in the other room. I will also make a finding today, and I didn't do this previously, although he's forfeited his right to be present, given the technology, the audio and visual equipment that we have, the fact that we've also backed out the one camera so he can see the jurors. I'll make a finding, even without that, though, that it's the functional equivalent of being present in this courtroom. All right, with that, then the, jur the jury uh, will be brought out. I'll remind Mr. Brooks, uh, while he can reclaim the right to come back into the courtroom no, and make a request. No, he can't. Please don't do it. I am going to be adamant uh, that his request uh, include a statement that he's willing to conduct himself consistently with the decorum and respect inherent in the concept of courts and judicial proceedings and specifically uh, pledge to not interrupt the reading of the jury instructions. Until such time, he will remain in that courtroom. All right, go ahead. Well, welcome to Law Talk with John. Finally, we're actually going to conduct some degree of business after an hour and a half. God help us. I knew it was going to be a long day. I just didn't realize it would be this long. I feel bad for the jury. No comment. Oh, no, Widget. The closings are happening today. She is going to force this. I think she, I don't, I think that regardless of how long it takes, she's going to charge the jury tonight. And I'll deliberate starting tomorrow. for the jury.
Akira, it's because she is very nice and she's trying to say that she gave him every opportunity under the sun. And it's a way of trying to appeal proof the case. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Members of the jury, the court will now instruct you upon the principles of law, which you are to follow in considering the evidence and in reaching your verdict. It is your duty to follow all of these instructions. Regardless of any opinion you may have about what the law is or ought to be, you must base your verdict on the law I give you in these instructions. Apply that law to the facts in the case which have been properly proven by the evidence. Consider only the evidence received during this trial and the law as given to you by these instructions and from these alone guide us by, guided by your soundest reason and best judgment reach your verdict. If any member of the jury has an impression of my opinion as to whether the defendant is guilty or not guilty, disregard that in Impression entirely and decide the issues of fact solely as you view the evidence. You, the jury, are the sole judges of the facts and the court is the judge of the law only. The defendant is charged with six separate counts of first degree intentional homicide use of a dangerous weapon. The first count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks, on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021, on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, did cause the death of Virginia Sorensen with intent to kill that person and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 939.50 sub 3 sub A and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The second count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks, on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021, on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, to cause the death of Leanna Owen with intent to kill that person and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 940.01 sub 1 sub A, 939.50 sub 3 sub A, and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The third count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021 on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, to cause the death of Tamara Durand with intent to kill that person and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 940.01 sub 1 sub 8, 939.50 sub 3 I always felt like public reading of jury instructions was kind of good and outdated. Statutes. Mechanism. Fourth count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021 on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, did cause the death of Jane Coolidge with intent to kill that person and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 940.01 sub 1 sub A, 939.50 sub 3 sub A, and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The fifth count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021 on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin, to cause the death of Wilhelm Hospital with intent to kill that person and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 940.01 sub 1 sub A, 939.50 sub 3 sub A, and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The sixth count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks, on or about Sunday, yep. November 21 of 2021, on Main Street. I'll give her this. She's Wisconsin, chugging through it. Washington County, Wisconsin, did mm -hmm. cause the death of Jackson Sparks with intent to kill that person and while using a dangerous weapon. Contrary to sections 940.01 sub 1 sub A, 939.50 sub 3 sub A, and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The defendant has entered a plea of not guilty to each of these charges, which means the state must prove she every shuts him down and of it's over. each offense charge beyond a reasonable. You lose your ability to give a close.
first degree intentional homicide as defined in section 940.01 of the criminal code of Wisconsin is committed by one who causes the death of another human being with the intent to kill that person or another. This, this is a good question. Or you may find the defendant guilty of any count of first degree intentional homicide. The state must prove by evidence which satisfies you beyond a reasonable doubt that the following I've got to think her clerks or herself were researching what to do if he one, starts free of nullification or whatever the defendant nonsense. Caused the death of the victim named in that count. Cause means that the defendant's act was a substantial factor in producing the death. Two, I got to think you should be able to count, forfeit your clothes if you start bringing up information. acted with intention to kill the victim named in that count. Intent to kill means that the actually don't know how the, purpose that works. The life of another human it would seem the state, state, or was it would seem the state would have certain to cause the death. And of they would object. Human. It would yeah. Good state cause would for a motion for mistrial, but not him if he's if he's the one doing it. But I could be wrong about that because I don't do criminal. Length of time before no, I mean I think that committed. makes sense. Again, and I'm not certain either. Over, I think the state would object. She would sustain the objection if he persists. At some point, I think any same sort of deal, he would forfeit his right to continue his clothes. The act. I just, I the intent genuinely to do kill not know. may be formed at any time before the act, including the instant before the act, and must continue to exist at the time of the act. You cannot look into a person's mind to find intent. Intent to kill must be found, if found at all, from the defendant's acts, words, and statements, if any, and from all the facts and circumstances in this case bearing upon intent. Intent should not be confused with motive. While proof of intent is necessary to a conviction, proof of motive is not. Motive refers to a person's reason for doing something. While motive may be shown as a circumstance to aid in establishing the guilt of a defendant, yes. the state is not required to prove motive on the part of a defendant in order to convict. Evidence of motive does not by itself establish guilt. You should give it the weight you believe it deserves under all of the circumstances. The information I don't know. is not only that the defendant committed the crimes of first not degree be intentional fun. homicide, but also that the defendant did so while using a dangerous weapon. Dangerous weapon means any device or instrumentality which, in the manner it is used or intended to be used, is likely to produce death or great bodily harm. Great bodily harm means serious bodily injury. If you find the defendant guilty of a count of first degree intentional homicide, you must answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit the crime of first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? Before you may answer this question, yes, you must be satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that the defendant committed the crime of first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon. If you are not so satisfied, you must answer the question, no. If you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that both elements of first degree intentional homicide have been proved as to count one, you should find the defendant guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count one. If you are not so satisfied, you must find the defendant not guilty as to count one. If you find the defendant guilty of count one, you must answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit the crime of first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? If you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that both elements of first degree intentional homicide have been proved as to count two, you should find the defendant guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count two. If you are not so satisfied, you must find the defendant not guilty as to count two. If you find the defendant guilty of count two, you must answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit the crime of first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? If you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that both elements of first degree intentional homicide have been proved as to count three, you should find the defendant guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count three. If you are not so satisfied, you must find the defendant not guilty as to count three. If you find the defendant guilty of count three, you must answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit the crime of first degree intentional homicide it. while using a dangerous weapon? 
if you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that both elements of first degree intentional homicide that would be what you would say I, I doubt you should find the defendant put on enough of the defense for that to actually be in their minds count four. if you are not so satisfied you must find the defendant not guilty as to count four if you find the defendant guilty of count four you must answer the following question yes or no did the defendant I'll have him escorted out of the courtroom intentional homicide or using a dangerous weapon if you are satisfied beyond a so reasonable far he hasn't doubt been violent, he's just been disruptive. Intentional homicide have been proved as to count five. You should find the defendant guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count five. No, I wouldn't if take you the under. So satisfied, you must find the defendant not guilty as to count five. If you find the defendant guilty of count five, you must answer the following question: Yes or no? Oh, did the it, defendant commit the crime completely of inappropriate? And he'll argue it. Homicide while using yeah. a dangerous weapon. If you are satisfied beyond a reasonable doubt that both elements of first degree intentional homicide have been proved as to count six, you should find the defendant guilty of first degree intentional homicide as charged in count six. If you are not so satisfied, you must find the defendant not guilty as to count six. If you find the defendant guilty of count six, you must answer the following question, yes or no. Did the defendant commit the crime of first degree intentional homicide while using a dangerous weapon? The defendant is charged with 61 separate counts of first degree recklessly endangering safety, use of a dangerous weapon. The seventh count of the information in this case charges that Daryl E. Brooks, on or about Sunday, November 21 of 2021, on Main Street in the city of Waukesha, mm -hmm. Waukesha County, Wisconsin, did recklessly endanger the safety of Nicole White under circumstances which show utter disregard for human life and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 941.30 sub 1, 939.50 sub 3 sub F, and 930. The nice part is because 61 of those counts are essentially the same. She doesn't have to go through each of the elements one by one on each of them. She'll just go through the counts and then the same elements together. On Main Street in the city of Waukesha, Waukesha County, Wisconsin did recklessly endanger the safety of Eleanor Anders under circumstances which show utter disregard for human life and while using a dangerous weapon, contrary to sections 941.30 sub 1, 939.50 sub 3 sub F, and 939.63 sub 1 sub B of the Wisconsin statutes. The ninth count of the information in this case charged. Okay. Can you hear me? Yep. I've got court. Oh, so right. and, and these are pretty boring. We can just come back at one o'clock or if you guys really want, want to hear her read the instructions, I can turn it back on. But but John's got to run the show for a while because I got to go to court. All right. No worries. Um, honestly, these are pretty boring. If folks want to kind of talk amongst themselves, I might actually run to the store real quick. I, 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 I don't know if I should keep the street, the, the stream going or just close it down and come back at one. I mean, I don't know, run it. If people stick around, I'll be back in maybe an hour or so when she's done with this garbage. Well, then, then, then we're going, then we're going to, uh, I just, then we're I, doing this. all right, just, I, I'm going to make the executive decision. I'm just, I'm just closing it down. We'll be, I'm going to set it. I'm going to set up the news stream for one o'clock. But right. I, but whatever it is, because I don't know, and she'll say at the end, and there might be delays and stuff. So I'll uh, keep an eye on it, and if she says that we're going to close the arguments, I'll shoot you a text, and we'll figure. Yeah, out. I, you know. So my my whole point is, I'll put I'll put a link out there for you guys. It'll say one o'clock, but what it is is whenever court resumes. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm guessing it's one o'clock, but I I don't know. That's the best information I have right now. Thank I mean, you she, all for. She's gonna for, go. She's gonna go to lunch when. They, she ends the instructions, so we're not right. Right, them. they might push it back, so they, they might be starting at two o'clock or twelve or one thirty or who knows what. Yeah, you know. As I said, I'll I'll keep an eye on in the background, and I'll shoot you a text whenever that's happening. All right, we'll close it down. Yeah, in the meantime, if you just want to hear the instructions, that's what uh, that's what long crime is for. All right, guys. Well, thanks for seeing y'all. All right, thanks, thanks everybody. You. I will see you all soon. All right, peace. Good luck in court. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>